Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up uh, the Orion Observer 2 70mm Equatorial Refractor. Uh, we'll show you from the starting point of all the individual pieces uh, that you find out of the box, all the way to the completed assembled unit here. So, let's get started. When you first take the parts out of the box, uh, this is what you'll find. Uh, just verify that you've got all the pieces, uh, and I'll just quickly go through it with you. Uh, the optical tube itself, sometimes called the OTA, optical tube assembly. Uh, the mount here, this is the equatorial head of the mount. And then various parts and pieces uh, for assembly of the tripod. You've got the three legs here, screws and the uh, uh, brackets, the hub on top of the tripod that attaches to the equatorial head. Uh, this is your counterweight shaft and the counterweight bar. And then over here we've got the accessories, the star diagonal, uh, finder scope, your two eyepieces, and then these are the slow motion knobs to control the, uh, the fine motion of the telescope. All right, so let's get started and uh, put this thing together. The first step is to attach the leg lock to each of the legs so the, um, the legs don't move up and down on you. Uh, pull out the feet a little bit so the center leg is somewhere in between. You don't want it all the way recessed up in there. I'm just going to pull it out about a couple inches. And then grab one of the leg locks and thread it into the socket on the side. So you're going to repeat that for all three legs. Next is the tripod hub. Uh, each leg attaches to one of these little protrusions in the hub using these long uh, screw and wing nuts. Uh, the first thing to do is to look at each leg and make sure it's the right direction. The tripod accessory tray bracket has to be on the inside of the um, legs, not on the outside because that's where the tripod accessory tray is in the middle. Then you also want to look on the top of each leg. One side of the hole is a hex head shape to fit the, uh, the hex head um, bolt. The other side is a round circle. So the first thing you want to do is take off the wing nut from the long screws and then making sure the brackets on the inside. Slip the hub between the holes and thread the bolt through the hex head shaped side because it's going to recess inside that little hex head and then thread it through both sides. So when I get it done, it's going to disappear into the hole just like that. And on the other side, I put the washer back on and then the wing nut. And then just repeat that for the other two legs. All right, now that you've got the tripod attached to the hub, it's time to put on the uh, central uh, accessory tray in between the legs. So stand the tripod up. Now there's nothing preventing the tripod from opening all the way up and collapsing on you, so just be careful with it. Put it at a, some angle here so it's going to stand up on you, uh, for you. And then the tray attaches to each of these little uh, flanges on the side using these tiny wing nut and screws. So Take the wing nut off each screw. Be careful, there's two little washers there and they can disappear on you if you drop them. Take one washer off because one washer is going to go on top and the other is going to go on the bottom. And the screw goes through the hole in the um, accessory tray, through the top of the flange, and then another washer below it, and then the wing nut. That gets threaded onto the bottom. And then just repeat that for each of the other two legs. All right, for this next step, I've raised the tripod legs up since we didn't have a table and my knees were killing me. Uh, so just loosen the leg locks, slide the legs up, tighten them back down, and now I've got this thing at its uh, higher point. Uh, the next step is to attach the equatorial head onto the top of the hub that you previously installed. Just take off the uh, large thumb knob here with this big washer on it. Unthread that all the way out. And then this little flange sits inside the top of the hub and then reinstall this from underneath and just do it hand tight and you're done. All right, the next step is to attach the latitude adjustment uh, bolt to the equatorial head so this thing is, when it's aligned, will stay at your local latitude. Uh, around here we're at 37 degrees north latitude. So just take the bolt, it goes through this uh, hole here on the side of the um, equatorial mount. I'm going to uh, loosen this large knob. That allows me to rotate the uh, head up and down in latitude. Bolt goes in through the large hole and thread it all the way in until it butts up against the head and you'll start to feel it. The further in I screw it, the, the higher this thing rests when it comes to a, uh, the, the furthest downward motion here. 
um, and just look at the scale here and then screw this in until this is raised up to your local latitude. So like I said, here in the San Francisco, San Jose Bay Area, we're at 37 degrees. 30, 40, a little high right there, right about there. Uh, and then don't forget to lock this back down because that locks the latitude height in place. Next, you're gonna take the counterweight and the counterweight shaft and install them onto the head. And they go down into this little threaded hole on the bottom of this little uh, flange section here. So what I like to do is take the counterweight, loosen the counterweight lock knob until when you look down the hole, there's no screw uh, uh, coming out into the opening. Then take your shaft and slide it through. And then while holding onto the counterweight, just thread the shaft into the mount all the way up until it's tight, and then you can lock the counterweight down. Now, since I don't have a telescope on this side, I don't want to like really make it out of balance, so I'm just going to lock the counterweight for the moment down up near the, the top of the mount. Next are the slow motion control knobs. Uh, they will attach on to the declination axis and the right ascension axis uh, using these two little shafts that come out. There's a little set screw on each, which you'll back out until looking down the hole of the slow motion knob, you see that they aren't uh, uh, coming into the opening. Loosen it up, and then on the slow motion shaft itself, there you'll find a little flat on the side. Well, that flat is where the screw is going to connect uh, and clamp down. It, it's a better connection when it's on something flat versus on the round section of the clamp. Uh, they come in two different lengths. It's really personal preference, which you like, um, so just experiment with it. But I'll put the short one here and lock down the screw. And I'll put the long one over on this side. It's a little hard to see from your end, but it's the same style shaft. And lock it down. And what that does is when the locks of the telescope are engaged, you can use a slow motion knob to fine tune the position of the telescope. When you want to manually move the scope around, you can unlock these two axes here and move it by hand. Lock it down, slow motion knobs take over. All right, next is your optical tube. So you're going to take the wing nuts off of the bottom of the tube. And be careful because there's small little washers uh, as well that are going to get lost. And the other one. There's two washers, so make sure you just take one off and leave one on each shaft because one washer will stay on top of the flange and the other washer will go down below it. The tricky part is to hold on to these two washers when you drop this in so they don't fall off. Just slip it right through the hole and then you're good. So next, you'll take a washer and a wing nut. Washer goes on the shaft first, and then the wing nut. And then just tighten down the tube uh, finger tight, and then repeat that for the other wing nut on the other shaft. The next step is the finder scope. This is the little reflex sight, and the base just slips into this little bracket here on the side. Um, it slips in this direction because you look through the backside into the front. Just slide it in underneath the flange and it sort of clicks in place. If you ever wanted to remove it, there's a little tab here that you just press down and it backs out, but a very simple installation. Next up is the diagonal. So that's going to go into the back of the focuser. So loosen the little set screw, take off the cap of both the scope and the diagonal, and then the diagonal just sits in there and then tightens down with the set screw. All of these accessories, the eyepiece, the diagonal, they slip in and the set screw tightens them down. Don't try to go unscrewing the diagonal or your eyepieces because you can unscrew them for assembly at the factory, but they're meant to stay nice and snug. They slip straight in and are tightened down by this set screw, which pinches the little chrome shaft and holds it in place. Once you get the diagonal in place, then it's time for the eyepiece. Uh, you get two eyepieces, a 25 and a 10 millimeter. And here's the tip. Always start with the lowest power eyepiece because that gives you the widest field of view to find things. So that's the, contrary to what you might think, that's the highest millimeter size. So the 25 millimeter is your low power eyepiece and the 10 millimeter is your high power. So I'm gonna slip the low power, the 25 millimeter in. Uh, same thing, loosen the set screw there until it's out of the way and the eyepiece just slips straight in and then it's snugged down by the set screw on the side. When it comes time to pull the eyepiece out, remember, don't go unscrewing the eyepiece because that will unscrew the, the, the body of the eyepiece. Loosen the set screw on the side and just slip it straight out. 
The next step is to balance the telescope with a counterweight uh, so there's no undue stress on the gears. Now remember during assembly of the mount, I slid the counterweight up towards the top. That may not be the perfect balance point. So what I'm gonna do is unlock the axes of the telescope. I'm gonna hold on to it in case it's really far out of balance because I don't want it to kind of fall forward on me. Uh, and I'll bring it over to the side. So notice first it's loose in that axis and this axis. So bring it over to the side and then sort of let go for a second and see what happens. Okay, so it's falling towards the telescope and away from the counterweight side. So what that tells me is there's not enough counterweight for the telescope, which means all I have to do is slide the counterweight slightly down the shaft and then repeat the same test. There we go, see, I can let go and it'll stay put at any angle. So I've just balanced the telescope. Make sure that the counterweight lock knob is snug again and you can bring it back up to its home position. The last step in the assembly process is to align the finder scope. Now the finder, if it's not aligned, it's impossible to find anything in the sky uh, because you're not, uh, it's, it's difficult to aim through the main scope because the, it, the field of view is fairly narrow. So the finder on the side helps to position the object right in the field of view. But when you, you first slide the finder onto the telescope, it's not actually perfectly aligned with it. So you've got to calibrate it. There's some screws on the side of the finder, this screw down on the bottom back end, and then uh, this screw right there on the side. That adjusts the up and down and left and right motions of the little dot that you see through the finder scope. So to do that, I like to do it during the day. Um, I'm just going to find something the hard way without using the finder first. So I'm actually just going to kind of pretend since I'm, I don't have much of a view out the window here. But if you have a tree or a power pole somewhere maybe a quarter mile or more away, that's perfect. And you can use that to align uh, like you would on the sky. So just line down the tube, lock down the axes and then use the slow motion knobs to fine tune the position until you find something uh, that's uh, very noticeable out there, like the corner of that building. Get it centered right in the eyepiece. Then turn on your finder and look through it and you'll see the dot and it probably will be a little bit off. Adjust the two little screws, this direction and this direction until this dot is looking at the same thing you're seeing through here. You might have to go back and forth a couple times in case you accidentally bump the telescope as you're doing something and it gets off. So uh, once you think you got it, look back through the telescope, verify the corner of the building is right there, look through the finder and verify that the dot is right on that same object. And then you're ready to go to use the finder to position Jupiter right on the dot and then you'll find it right in the eyepiece. All right, well, there you have it. That's the assembly of the Orion Observer 2 70 millimeter equatorial refractor. Uh, I think you'll find it's not too difficult. You really don't need many tools. It's just uh, hand thumb knobs, and it's a pretty quick assembly. Once you got it up and running, you're ready to start viewing the night sky. All right, well, thank you very much. Clear skies.